Hello, I'm Giulio Motta, uh, owner and founder of Zenzero Electronics, and I'm talking to you on a rainy day from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, today I would like to talk about uh, a video I saw during the weekend where uh, a fellow pedal builder was trying to compare different kind of op amps and uh, he went to great extent to discuss the difference but what I'd like to point out is that what he was going after was not relevant to the way we use op amps in uh, pedal building especially when you build a distortion or overdrive pedal so this uh, fellow pedal builder compared op amps based on their frequency response but the fact is frequency response is not that important for what we are trying to achieve in building pedals guitar effects and especially uh, distortion or overdrives with a dirt box we are creating new sounds so the fidelity the high fidelity which might be really important for other applications like hi-fi or whatever it's really not that important the fellow pedal builder went on and concluded his uh, i don't think he found any real difference in frequency response from uh, all the different op amps uh, he tried but he went on and what he said at the end kind of bothered me because uh, uh, i i paraphrase here but he said i only care for measurement scientific measurements of op amps performance and that's all right and dandy but the problem is it kind of misses the problem the issue i should go back and say that at the beginning when i started building pedals i also didn't think there was any real difference between op amps because i was just looking at the specs and all they were telling me that all op amps were the same but what I found out is that the real difference we care about when we build booster, overdrives, distortion is the distortion of the pump. But not how little distortion he has, but the quality of the distortion when we push the pumps to its, its limits. And that cannot be quantified with simple numbers. Just ask the people like uh, Amplitude or XFX, which try to replicate these uh, effects in the digital realm. It's really, really hard to simulate the distortion you get from a real analog circuit. And so when it comes to op amps, do we really care about the frequency response? I mean, here is a, a data sheet for LF353, which is the op amp we ended up using in the Red Crown. And that's just based on the sound. It's not an expensive op amp, but it sounded better because the decay of the distortion, it was just better. And I could appreciate how clean it was when it has to be clean and how nice dirty gritty was when it was supposed to be distorting the frequency response is of little importance because you see most of amps have a perfect or almost perfect distortion versus frequency graph or even frequency response up to 100 kilohertz or something and uh, but even above that is just like zero two percent of distortion it's not something we can really hear when we are talking about a dirt box of course, like super hi-fi specific or uh, precision application. If you, I mean, if you build a microphone preamp, then that's a different story. But we were talking about dirt box, and that's why we discuss the different properties of the different dirt boxes. And what's different? It's the quality of the distortion. And I found out that the most telling parameter you can search in all these 20 pages that are sheet the most important thing you're really after is stated right on top of a sheet and it's here jfat 
input. That's gonna make the sound. The LF353 is a JFET input, as many others, and most famously the TL TL07X series, TL072, TL71, TL074, they have a JFET input. In fact, it is well known the JFET uh, sounds good. You can just ask Brian Wampler, which uses a ton of FETs in his pedals because they sound damn good and it's well known. Basically, could it be because it's uh, their distortion more similar to a tube, just greedier? And that's exactly what we are after. And what we can find out if we want to go a bit more in details, we can check with a simplified schematic, but or you can see the schematic and you see every input, these are the two inputs of the op amp, we have FETs. And that is mostly what the kind of distortion is going to depend uh, on. Of course, we have different kind, then the specific will change a little. For example, for my red crown, I went back and forth between a TL072 and the LF353 several times. The difference was pretty small. In the end, I prefer the 353 because it just sounded better to my ear. Maybe in a different circuit, maybe it, it required different performances and the TL072, it's, I mean, it's in every pedal out there and there is a reason for it because it sounds great, it's cheap and uh, you can find it pretty much anywhere. Maybe for other application, a different kind of uh, op-amp is gonna sound better. For example, I was really close to choose a TLE2022 for uh, the Red Crown, but then it sounded, that doesn't have, uh, it's the only op-amp that sounded really good, but didn't actually have a JFET input and uh, yes, uh, is this uh, fancy Excalibur or whatever it is, it's a high performance op amp and um, it's a lot more expensive because like five times as much as a TLO72. But in the end, it sounded too clinical and the distortion was not that good when we were pushing the uh, input stage of a pump the distortion was not up to par with a JFET input operational amplifier. These are just my two cents. I think uh, I might do another video where I actually can make you hear the differences between the uh, different op amps inside the Red Crown. And maybe you can hear for yourself. Sometimes, but I repeat, sometimes the differences are pretty small. But when you're really pushing the input of your operation amplifier, you will find the distortion differs between different op amps and sometimes it can make or break the pedal. Just my two cents. It's not frequency response we are after, it's the quality of distortion and that's something that's not easily quantifiable. Is that a word? Sorry, English not my first language. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye bye.